subtopic, follow the model. Jesus, the model. Subtopic is follow the model. Now, last week, we talked just about being a Christian of culture. I want us to know today that you cannot be a Christian who's cautious unless you are following the model. We have to follow Jesus, who is the model. Amen. I'm, I'm gonna say one more again. Amen. That's right. Beat it again. You, you, you have to be a follower of the model. Now, we cannot be cautious if we are not following Jesus. If we doing things our way, we become reckless. We're doing things our way, we become out of order. When we do things our way, we become out of control. But the Bible reminds us that there is a model for us to follow, and his name is Jesus. Now let me just say this, you got to follow Jesus, not just on Sunday morning service. Not just on Saturday service for those who may go in the building on Saturday. But we must follow him uh, each and every day. We got to get up saying, Lord, show me the way. Order my steps. Uh, I want to imitate you because that's what it means to follow the model. Is to know that we are imitating Jesus Christ. Now I want to say this before. I'm going to give you a scripture in a moment here. You, when you're going to follow the model, you can't fake it till you make it. Because the God that I serve is not a fake God. He's real. So therefore, we don't need to practice faking it till you make it. Because when you fake it, you don't make it. You make up all kinds of things that are not of God. But when you follow the model, because you're proceeding with caution, because you want God to get the glory out of your story, because you want to know that your life is edifying somebody else and horrifying the enemy, you follow the model. Amen. And Jesus is the model. Now let's go to 1 Corinthians and I want to give you a few bullet points of this message and then we're going to move forward and allow us to exit the building but not exit from our following mm -hmm. the model. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. First Corinthians chapter 11 verse number 1 Paul writing to the church at Corinth. He says be ye followers of me even as I also am a follower of Christ. Let me read that again. He says, be ye followers of me, even as I also am a follower of Christ. In other words, Paul was saying, imitate me uh -huh. as I imitate Christ. Mm -hmm. You know what Paul was saying there? He says, Jesus is the model and we've got to follow the model. Now let me say to us also right up front, don't follow anyone who's not imitating or following the model of Jesus. Now that could be your spouse. That might be somebody you know, that might be a co-worker, might be a relative, but we need to know that they are following the model of Christ, that they are imitating Christ, that they are doing the things God's way and not their own way. Now why would Paul say, imitate me or follow me as I imitate and follow Christ? Because what he was saying is that Jesus lived a life that was worthy of imitating. Amen. Do you know any people that's living life that's worthy of imitating? Mm -hmm. Now those of us who profess Christ, Amen. we should be living lives that are worthy of imitating. Amen. Jesus said in Matthew 5 and 16, let your light so shine before men that they'll see your good works and glorify the Father in heaven. Now, when you imitate someone, you're not trying to be that person. You're just trying to be as they are with the lifestyle that they live. We are still individually uniquely designed by God. However, we should be those that live lives with others who want to imitate. Here's an example. Somebody should want to imitate that you are praying because they see you praying or they know you are praying for them. They can call on you and you are praying and not talk garbage. That's what you ought to want to imitate. All right, then. Let me, let me move a little further here. 
in John chapter 10 and verse 27. Notice what the Bible says. I'm reading from the English Standard Version. It says, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. Now let me stop right here. I've been saying this to us for weeks and weeks and that is in respect to the election and elections are coming up and I'm not going to tell people how to vote and who to vote for. What I am going to tell you is that we need to know that we are imitating Christ. That we are following his voice because we got all kind of voices over social media and all kind of voices in our neighborhoods and communities and all kind of voices in the workplace and all kind of voices in the marketplace and all kind of voices but Jesus said here my sheep know my voice and that's who they'll follow they won't follow a stranger they won't follow a lover in other words he said they'll imitate me they'll follow me because they know my voice question on the floor don't ask it for me ask it for yourself do you know the voice of Jesus let me say one more again God. do you know the voice of Jesus do we really know his voice when we get in some jammed places, do we know his voice when we don't feel the best? Do we know his voice when folk are picking at us and we ain't done nothing to them? Do we know his voice? He said, when you know my voice, you will follow me. Not what you want to say or what you think you can not say. He said, you will follow me. Do you know his voice when the doctor has given you a report that is not favorable? Do you know his voice? When they're about to tell you on the job, they no longer need your services. Do you know his voice? When you're trying to get up in the morning and it seems like don't nothing want to fall out. Do you know his voice? When your own voice is telling you, don't worry about it, just leave it alone. Don't do it. No, do you know his voice? Because he says, I need you to follow me. I need you to imitate me. Come on here. Jesus the model. Follow the model. Then in Matthew 16 and 24, English Standard Version says, Then Jesus told his disciples, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross. Watch this. And follow me. Church, where are we now? Where are we now? Are we in a place? Have we grown to the place where we can deny ourselves and follow Christ and follow him? Not just again on a Sunday morning, but follow him Monday through Monday. Follow him from one week to the next. Follow him from month to month. Follow him from year to year. Because we're in rough waters. And we got to know we got to deny ourselves. So when you deny yourself, that means we got to set some things aside. We got to set aside, I feel and I think. We got to say, Lord, show me, speak to me. Because I want to know that what is happening in my life is bringing glory to you and edifying somebody else. All right then, thank God for about two or three of you all and the rest of you are going to get on board in a minute. Because see, what we got to understand, and, and hear me clearly, this message today is strictly for us to stop and take a good look in the mirror and see who is it that we really follow. Amen. Huh? Amen. You got a lot of people want you to follow them. A lot of groups now say follow them. We got a lot of organizations say follow them. But the church should only and always follow Jesus Christ. All right then, so let's look at number one. How we follow the model, because Jesus is the model. Number one, here's what Jesus did. Jesus consistently modeled the pattern of exalting his father in every area of his life. That's number one. That if we're going to follow the model, then that means that we must do what? We should exalt the father in every area of our lives. In other words, we should kneel so God, our Father, is getting the glory again out of our stories. Amen. John chapter 5 and verse 19, notice what the scripture says here. It says, Jesus said to them, truly, truly, I say to you, the Son can do nothing of his own accord, but only what he sees the Father doing. For wherever the Father does, that the Son does also. That's John chapter 5 and verse 19. That goes with your first bullet point. That we 
must exalt the Father in every area of, of our lives. And Jesus said here that what he's doing, he says the Son can do nothing of his own accord, but only what he sees the Father doing. In other words, he says, I can only do what my Father is doing. I don't get to make up nothing. I don't get to change nothing. Talk back to me every day. We got to know, church, we don't get to make up. We don't get to change it. And we going to follow God, follow God. If you're going to be with God, be with God. If you're for God, be for God. Don't change. Don't switch out on God because the service is ended on Sunday. Don't switch out on God because you're talking with some other people. Don't switch out on God, but stay the same. Amen. For the glory Amen. of God. Amen. Luke 23 and 36 says, Then Jesus calling out with a loud voice, he said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And having said this, he breathed his last. Now watch this, how again he wanted the Father to be exalted. Even when dying on the cross, he says, I commend my spirit. Let me tell you something. Even while you're going through and persecution comes, we got to still say, God, I'm looking to you. I'm going to follow the model and I'm going to cast it all upon you because you said you'd never leave me nor forsake me. You are very present help in my times of going through. So then exalt the Father by casting it on him and say, although I'm in this rough place, I know it's going to smooth out because I'm turning it over to you. Then the second bullet point for us is Jesus modeled the importance, don't miss this, of obedience to his father's will. He modeled the importance of obedience to his father's will. What does that mean? That means that he didn't change it and say my will, but he said your will. Remember when Jesus started in ministry, he says, I came to do the will or to do the work of him that sent me. When we get to the text here, it says in Luke 22 and 42, says, Father, if it is your will. Listen what he said now. Take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. Yeah. Wait a minute. What is, that? If we go, is that what it said? And we're going to follow the model. Thank you, Lord. Watch this. Then we got to know the importance of obeying the Father's will. Mm -hmm. Amen. I'm glad it's quiet right now. Because, yeah. amen. I, I'm glad it's quiet because I pray all of us listen from the, from the pulpit to out the door, cross the street, and round the corner. Because if we're going to follow the model, which was Jesus, we must be obedient to the Father's will. No second guessing. No saying, well, I, I, I think I can. I think. No, 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 no. We got to say, I know I can. Mm -hmm. I can do all things through Christ Amen. who strengthens me. Amen. Ephesians chapter 6 tells us, be strong in the Lord Amen. and in the power of his might. Yeah. Jesus said here, oh my God. He says that I, if, if it be your will, take this cup away. I don't want to have to go through this. But Jesus said, nevertheless, not my will. But thine be done. Mm -hmm. When the last time we really said that to the Lord? I say like this, I say, when the last time we really said to the Lord, not my will. Not my will. Not my way. Not my words. But your will. Which is his word. Which ultimately means it'll be done his way. We're talking about Jesus, the model now. Follow the model. And then he says in John 6 and 38, under bullet point number two, he says, For I have come down from heaven, here we go, not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. Do you all not know we're here today not to do our own will? I'm not here to say my own words, I'm here to say the words of the word. One of the things that's getting a lot of our pastors in trouble across social media and beyond is because they get up and instead of saying the word, they talking and saying everything else but the word. That ain't God's will. Paul told Timothy, preach the word in season and out of season. He says, I'm charging you. Don't change the agenda. Stay with the word because that's the will of God. Amen. 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 
We got to stay with the word. That's, that's a good phrase right there too. Huh? We got to learn how to stay focused. When we going to follow Jesus who is the model, we got to stay focused on Jesus. So he says, I come down from heaven again, John 6 and 38. And it's the New King James version of this verse. He says, I come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. Now, wait a minute. Jesus said, I came to do the will of him who sent me. Let me say this. Before you go, know who sent you. If you're going to follow Jesus, you got to go with the one who sent you and know that it's God and not people. Amen. Let me say that again. Know that it's God who sent you and not people. Amen. Jesus made it abundantly clear that I'm here to do the work of him that sent me. Amen. Church, we should be letting everybody know I'm here to do the work Amen. of him that sent me. Even on that job, do the work of him that sent you. In that relationship, do the work of him that sent you. In your community, do the work of him that sent you. When you're going to follow the model, then that's what has to take place. That we got to do the work of him that sent us. Amen. Oh my God. All right, then the next bullet point, number three. Jesus modeled the importance of prayer in his life and ministry. Jesus modeled the, 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 the importance of prayer in his life and ministry. Let me say one more again. Jesus modeled the importance of prayer in his life and ministry. Luke 5 and 16 says, so he himself often withdrew into the wilderness and prayed. If we're going to follow the model, which is Jesus, the model, follow him, we got to learn the importance of prayer in this life. Amen. We got to pray in and out of season. We got to pray at any time and for any reason. The song says prayer is the key. Faith unlocks the door. He'll hear every word you say. And while you call it, he's on the way. Prayer will fix it every time. But we got to model that. We got to pray in our lives and in ministry because it is important if we going to follow the model with this Jesus. Jesus prayed. And the Bible just told us that what he did, don't miss this, he withdrew. Sometimes you got to withdraw from folk. Amen. If they don't want to pray, withdraw. If they don't want to come together and touch and agree on what God's word say, withdraw and keep on praying. Amen. Keep on following the model. And then here's what you got to know. You don't have to get on these folk job. Uh oh. And be all out in the center praying and, and, and speaking in tongues as some say. No. Because Jesus said in Matthew 6, don't be like the hypocrites that they want to pray to be seen. So you ain't got to pray to be seen, but you got to pray if you're going to model Jesus. If you're going to follow Jesus. If you're going to imitate him. Church, we got to pray. And sometimes a prayer is no more than Lord have mercy. Sometimes a prayer is no more than Lord help me to hold out. Sometimes a prayer is no more than God I can't make this journey by myself. Sometimes a prayer is no more than Lord if you don't leave me I don't know which way to go. Sometimes a prayer is no more than Lord I just want to thank you for being so good to me. See, prayer don't have to be Hebrew and Greek. Prayer just have to be sincere. Prayer just have to be real. Prayer just have to come from our hearts. So when we go model Jesus, follow him, then we've got to have prayer in our lives. You got to pray. I say you got to pray. I heard you back there, daughter. That fellow who made that song probably wish he'd have been praying at one time. Yeah, 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 yeah. We got to pray just to make it today. That's why we pray. We, church, we got to pray. Church, do we really recognize where we are? I say like this, I say, do we really recognize where we are? Because if we did, it would be more of us praying and less us talking. And if you're going to talk, talk with Jesus. 
He's on the main line. Do we really recognize what's going on? Watch this. In our individual lives before we collectively come together. If we really recognize, we'll pray. Amen. All right. Amen. People are going to say, well, why do you seem like you're praying all the time? Because I'm just following the model. Jesus is the model. And he prayed. And the songwriter say, if Jesus had to pray, what about me? Huh? The songwriter say, he had to fall down on his knees, crying, Lord, have mercy on me. If Jesus had to pray, what about me? Church, we got to pray, and we're going to follow the model, and Jesus is the model. And then number four on the list says to us that Jesus modeled full dependence. Don't miss this. Upon he the Holy Ghost. Let me just say. Somewhere. It got misconstrued that folk can be saved. Without the Holy Ghost. Now hear me clearly. I didn't say catching the Holy Ghost. Because when I come along folk caught the Holy Ghost. <laughs> but you don't catch him. He catch us. Because the Bible says no man can come except the Holy Spirit draws them. So when he's drawn, we surrender and say, yes, Lord. But nevertheless, Jesus modeled full dependence upon the Holy Ghost. Luke chapter 4. How do you know this? Here we go. Luke chapter 4 and verse number 1. New King James Version says, then Jesus being filled with the Holy Ghost. Now, wait a minute. Before we go any further. Jesus being filled. Luke chapter 4 and verse number 1. Jesus being filled. I'm reading from New King James Version. Jesus being filled with the Holy Ghost. Now I'm going to stop right there again. Church, you better know that you're filled with the Holy Ghost and not just a ghost. And being filled with the Holy Ghost don't mean you got to fall in the flow, roll up under the pews and the chairs, tear up all of the chandeliers, knock holes in the plaster. The drywall, brother. That that ain't that that's not ever did of being filled with no Holy Ghost. Sometimes that's ever did of being a clown. Acting out. Because when we're filled with God's Holy Ghost, Galatians chapter 5 tells us the characteristic of He the Holy Spirit. And that's that's called the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace. Love. Look for those things. You want to see it folks filled with the Holy Ghost. Look for the love of God. Look for the joy unspeakable. Love, joy, peace. Do they have peace of mind? Not a peace of mind, but peace of mind. Yeah, yeah. Come on. There's a difference. So he says then, being filled with the Holy Ghost, I'm going to finish the verse this time, Luke chapter 4 and verse 1. Returned from the Jordan, don't miss this, and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Now, what was the purpose of Jesus already filled with the Holy Ghost and he was yet led into the wilderness by the Holy Spirit to what? To be tempted of the devil. Now, when you're going to follow the model and Jesus the model, sometimes he, the Holy Spirit, will lead you into a place to see, do you know where? Do we know where we are? God already knows because he's omniscient. He knows all things. However, it's the, the, the point is, are we going to obey the leading of he, the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Godhead? Amen. So Jesus modeled full dependence on the Holy Ghost. Church, we ought to have full dependence on the Holy Ghost. Amen. I think of another song that you say, Holy Ghost, don't leave me. Uh -huh. Holy Ghost, don't you leave me. Holy Ghost don't leave me, but guide me on my way. When David messed up with Bathsheba, Uriah's wife, you know what David said? Whatever you do, don't take your Holy Spirit from me. My God. Because David understood at that point, I need to be dependent, not independent of the Holy Ghost. And church, the church cannot be independent. Of God's Holy Spirit and think we're going to make it. We got to be dependent. On God's Holy Spirit. And then number five on the list of Jesus the model. Follow the model. Jesus model knowing and using God's word in his life and in ministry. 
Let me say that again. Jesus modeled knowing and using God's word in his life and in ministry. He knew the word and used it. He encouraged the everyday issues, encounters, excuse me, everyday issues of life. So he needed to know the word. Church, we are encountering everyday issues of life and we need to follow the model. We need to use the word of God. Matthew chapter 4 and verse 4 and the New King James Version says, but he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds, watch this, from the mouth of God. Man don't live by bread alone. But by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Jesus modeled knowing and using God's word in his life. What about us? Now somebody say, well, Pastor, I don't know all the scriptures. I don't either. <laughs> but I know how to read them. I know how to find what I need. Talk back to me if you can. The point is, if we're going to follow the model which Jesus was the model, we must learn how to use God's word in our life and in ministry. We must learn how to get into the word and say, God, I know you've already addressed this because in the book of Proverbs, it tells us in Ecclesiastes as well, I believe both those books tell us that there's nothing new under the sun. So then, it's in the book. I got to go to the book of God. I got to go to the word of God. Because I need to learn how to use God's word. So I can model after he that modeled the word. Which was Jesus himself. John chapter 1 and verse 1 goes with this fifth bullet point. He said in New King James verse says, In the beginning was the word. Mm -hmm. And the word was with God. And the word was God. In the beginning was the word. Now listen. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. Where can you go where in the word? The word is every place. Because it's in the beginning. It started it. Because the Bible says in Genesis 1. That God uh, uh, created the heavens and the earth. And then it goes on to tell us. That God said that there be. See there the word is. The spoken word. And we have the written word. And then we ought to be living the word. But you're going to have to have God's word in your life if you're going to model Christ. It's the word. And I know sometimes, sometimes, because let me just talk about me for a minute. Sometimes I'm guilty of not using God's word. I use some words from my culture if I ain't careful. Some words from my background. Talk back to me. Come on, am I, am I by myself? But if we're going to model, if we're going to model Jesus, thank you. Heard one of them, no, you ain't. Somebody let me know I ain't by myself. Because see, life has a way of flipping the script on you. And we got to stay ever so focused. Because if we don't stay focused, we'll start saying words that we heard that didn't come from Sunday school and neither vacation Bible group. <laughs> Amen, somebody. Amen. Ecclesiastes 1 9 is what I was referring to earlier. Thank you, Checker. The thing that has been. It is that which shall be, and that which is done is that which shall be done. And there is no new thing under the sun. That's Ecclesiastes chapter 1 and verse 9, King James Version. And nothing new under the sun. So I need the word. Now see, see, that's a word that somebody need to know. So if somebody try to bring you something, that God is, what's this? He's doing something new right now. Well, hold it. <laughs> Hold it. And I know in Isaiah, it talks about God is doing a new thing. But we have to know the content, the context. We have to know what the scripture is saying there. Who is it talking to? And what was it talking about? This new thing that we got to be careful of is folk telling folk that God is doing a new thing by telling people uh, to do some of these other things that, that's called for game and gimmick. And all they're doing are scheming and, 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 and frauding and flim flamming folk. God ain't doing no new thing on that order. That's why you got to know the word. And again, that word we just quoted. Thank you again, Checker. He creeped at his one nine. Ain't nothing new under the sun. That's why it's good to let young people know when they think they're getting by because they got electronics. We just did it on, We just did it with the phones that was in the house. <laughs> they got cell phones. Some of us had the rotary dial. It took us longer to get in trouble. <laughs> yeah, but we got the same trouble. Why don't some of y'all talk to me? We had to go uh, four. 
And he says, and whoever desires to be first among you, let him be your slave. Now, slave is not in the sense of what we know from slavery. Slave simply means that we become attached or a slave to doing the will of God, to serving, to being there, to carrying out what God's word instructs us to. And he says, just as the son of man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for men. Now, you ain't got to give your life up for nobody. Jesus took care of that for everyone. That's Matthew chapter 20, verse 26 through 28. And then John 13, verses 3 through 5, New King James Version says, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, rose from supper, don't miss this, and laid aside his garment, took a towel, and girded himself. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel with which he was girded. That's serving. Mm -hmm. If we're going to follow the model, then follow the model. That simply means that you got to humble down and serve somebody else. Don't always want to be served. Learn how to serve somebody else. Jesus took on the role of a servant. There should have been a servant on hand at the door. They were open. They were open. Uh, tall shoes, open uh, like sandals, and, and the drawers were dusty. Yeah, yeah. And there should have been a servant on hand. When Jesus didn't see one, he says, I'll take that on. If we're going to model Jesus, do we see stuff and then take it on? The serving, are we willing to armor down and wash one another's feet? Mm. I know I know it's a tall order. <laughs> <laughs> we used to be affiliated with a ministry where every first Sunday when we had communion, we also washed feet. The men washed the men's feet and the women washed the women's feet. And they took it from this scripture. That what Jesus was showing was how we should serve and only gonna serve by humbling down. Now some people say, Well, I, we still got to wash feet. No, you ain't got touch for feet. <laughs> Sometimes you don't know where they <laughs> but anyway It is the model That we got to take from that The example to just be willing To humble down and serve Now let's, let's, let's put this all together Because the train's pulling into the station We went from last week A Christian of cautious If we're going to be Christians that are cautious Then we got to know that Jesus is the model and we got to follow the model. Again, Paul said, be ye followers of me or imitators of me as I imitate Christ. Church, are we ready to follow the model? I mean wholeheartedly, not just part-time and not just when things are going the way we want them to. We got to know that God is calling for us to follow the model because there's so much out here now in this atmosphere that's trying to get us to not follow the model. Let me say this in closing. The enemy does not want your stuff. The enemy wants your character. The enemy wants your attitude to not be of that of the model, which is Jesus. Mm -hmm. If you check scripture, and we'll go deeper into this at another time, from the beginning of scripture, Genesis to Revelation, what was it that the enemy was after? The character of the people. Even when he showed up with Job, and the Lord God told him now, you do whatever you do to his body. And he couldn't do that without the, the Lord's permission. He said, but his soul, you can't have. So he jumped on his character. He even told his wife, his wife told Job, why don't you just cuss God and die? Yeah. See, he wants your character. But we ought to declare today that we're going to follow the model. Jesus is the model. And we're going to do this thing Jesus' way. Because Jesus said in John 14 and 6, I am the way, yeah. the truth, and the life. No man coming to the Father except but by me. And for this reason, we are out. Stay encouraged in the Lord. Follow the model. Jesus is the model. Amen.